Good morning. Today we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. With faith that we do not live on bread alone, we gather to feast on the nourishing word of God and the bread of angels. My name is Dan Walzik. Chris Foley and I will proclaim the word today. Thomas Eaton is our cantor. Please silence all cell phones. Our gathering hymn is Rain Down. Let us place ourselves in God's holy presence.
we who are your servants, and answer our prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those of us who glory in you as our creator and God, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into the desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus, I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life corrupted through deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. According to John, glory to you, O Lord. May your words always be on my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, what can, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. They said to him, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. 
It was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My father gave you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. As you know, some of you may, some of you may not know, but this is my first 945 Mass as pastor. Just want to warn you, I speak two hours in my homily. <laughs> Cut the afternoon activities, we're going to be here for a long time. Not really. But I'm awfully happy to be here, succeeding Father Patterson, who I know you loved, and I certainly love. Father Patterson has been a longtime friend of mine. And thanks be to God, uh, he has left a beautiful parish for me to inherit. So I'm very grateful to Father for these wonderful uh, experiences I'm having already. And you know, the first weeks of a new pastor and when he celebrates Mass is kind of awkward. You don't know me, and I don't know you. And the Irish used to say, the first thing to do when you meet somebody is to take stock of them. <laughs> See what they're like. And uh, you won't know what I'm like until time goes on. So be patient with all of us, Father Nathaniel, the new, uh, newly ordained priest, and both he and I arrived here last month, and we're getting used to everything here, and we're very happy to be here in this next chapter of, the, of Our Lady of Victory. And uh, I just hope you pray for us and keep us uh, aware of what your needs are. We're here to serve you and here to be of help to all of you. So I hope that's exactly what we can be for each other. So it's good to be here today. And I'm so happy to see children in church and uh, how I like when they come. And you know, kids sometimes squiggle, don't they? And sometimes they shout out loud. And you know what? It's okay. So I just want to say I'm so happy that the kids are here. We have to get them used to coming to church and being comfortable here in this place. So I'm just delighted to see young people and young kids here in church. And we're not disturbed by them, so don't be worried about kids in church. Now, you know, they want me to do something, and that is to go to work right away. And part of my work is to share with you some insights into today's gospel and into today's readings and into the scriptures because the scriptures feed us. That's why we read the Bible and we read the scriptures because our minds need constant feeding, you know? I don't know about you, but I watch TV and they're feeding us all the time with their values. TV is a part of life. It's on all the time, 24-7. And it's the best pulpit in the world because it's preaching stuff to us. And we need to get other stuff. We need to hear what Jesus says about life and death and what this existence is about. If you listen to just television, you know what they tell us life is about. It's about enjoyment, succeeding, money, power, all those things. Now, the television is great for many things. But the overarching message is just about this world and getting along. And so the Word of God, which we hear every Sunday, that's why I so beautifully read the readings today. And one of the things I noticed immediately, having some masses here, is how attentive you all are to listening to the Word of God. And what does it say to us today? We have a first reading from the book of Exodus, and then we have that beautiful uh, section from St. John's Gospel, chapter 6, which is called the Bread of Life Discourse. So let me just mention a few things. 
Now, when I was a little kid, I was trained in Catholic schools, and you know that Catholic schools are so hard to keep open these days. How many of you went to Catholic elementary school? Could you raise your hand? Good number, okay? Weren't those nuns great? (laughs) They were, really. You know, overall, they were great teachers. And they made us profoundly guilty, didn't they? (laughs) How I wish I could do that to the new generation. How good it is to be guilty about not going to Mass, huh? How I wish we could do that. But the nuns taught us a lot in their capacity. Some of us went on for other studies, and I'm sure most of you have read about our faith past elementary school. But one of the things the nuns taught us about is, who is God? Who is God? You know, we, at the creed we say, I believe in one God. And we Catholics have nice, good insight into who God is. We don't know everything about God. We can't. Our intelligences are limited. We're limited. And if we knew everything about God, he wouldn't be, it wouldn't be real. But we know a lot about God. Remember what the nuns told you? He's everywhere. Remember? Everywhere. How could a being be everywhere? We're only here right now. We can be in one place and one time. He knows everything. We only know a little bit. Some of you know a lot in your fields, life experience. We only know a little bit. But God knows everything. God is just. God is merciful. Remember all those things you learned? But one of the things the nuns told us, and sometimes we didn't get it in our generation, we got a fear of God a little bit more than understanding the whole truth about God. And I'm going to say this very carefully. God is liberal. You ready to get scared? Not politically. I'm not talking politics. I don't want to be hurled, books thrown at me my first week here. But the, the, the church has taught us, and we know from the Jews and from our tradition, God is a liberal in his heart. What does that mean? That means that God can't stop giving. That God pours out constant blessings on us who are his children. Now stop for a minute. Stop. If you weren't a Catholic Christian, you often think God is primarily mean or that he's watching over you ready to trip you up. But if you're a Christian and you understand our faith, you know the God we have is ultimately liberal of heart. He's not only liberal of heart with the whole generation, the whole world, he's liberal of heart with you and me. He made me. Wow, I'm grateful. He gave me a fairly good family. No family's perfect, are they? He gave me an education, I'm breathing, except for a few health problems, I'm not so bad. Guess what, I have friends, I really do. And I'm a priest of this beautiful church. God pours out his blessings on each one of us. What are your blessings? You're here today, and so much has been given to all of us. God is a liberal. And you know, the readings today are all about that. Think about that first reading from the book of Exodus. Here are the Israelite tribe that that God chose of all the tribes of the time. He could have chosen the Egyptians and the Persians and the Midians, but he chose Israel. He led them out of slavery. The Messiah was going to come from Israel. He led them out of slavery. And guess what they do while they're wandering in the desert? They grumble because they don't have enough blessings. They want more. They forget all the blessings they had, and they focus on just the ones they don't have. 
And the ones they didn't have at the moment was they didn't have good food. They had regular desert food. And what does God do? God gives them quail, flesh to eat in the desert, and he gives them manna, this kind of bread. It's miraculous. It comes down from heaven. Bread from heaven. He feeds them. Even when they're grumbling, God can't help but be generous. And isn't that me and you? I get up in the morning and my first thought is, my back hurts. <laughs> How I wish I had a 24-year-old back like Father Nathaniel, who pops out of bed ready to roll. Don't we sometimes focus on what we don't have and forget the blessings that we do have? And it's okay, a lot of blessings we do not have. We don't understand why we don't have some blessings. Other people may have them and we don't. But we fail to remember how good God is to us. Now in the gospel today, which is called the Bread of Life Discourse, Jesus gives a whole load of teaching on him being bread. Jesus being bread. The thing that when you eat, gives you life. What kind of bread is he? Well, he doesn't give physical life to us, we who are grumbling about our blessings. You know what he gives us? Strength in the midst of our grumblings. He gives us an invisible bread. You and I are so lucky that we go through life with eating the Lord's grace. Imagine if we didn't, how miserable life would be. That's why being a Catholic Christian is such a gift. It's not about following rules. It's being given great blessings. So many people in the world don't have faith. They're good people. God loves them. But how do they deal with the grumblings of life? Huh? We get power and grace and strength through Jesus being the bread of life. Again, he keeps giving even while we're grumbling. Now, and then he says, I'm the bread of life, accept me in faith. Walk with me, and that's bread enough. But I'm going to give you a bread because I'm going to stay with you every week as you grumble every week. And he gives us the Holy Eucharist. Jesus remains here on earth while he's in heaven so that we can be fed every week with him in the midst of our grumbling. You know, I'm getting old. And it's a blessing in some ways. It's a blessing because you can look back and you can see all the blessings of your life. It's also a grumbling time because I can look back and see all the losses of my life. I can see all that wasn't given to me. And how do we deal with those losses and those deficits? That's when the bread of life gives us hope and strength. Because when I think about my deceased in my family, I have hope, real hope, every day I'm fed with the Eucharist, that they're alive in the Lord. And as I deal with sometimes the loneliness of not having those whom we've loved, I'm comforted by the bread of life. So today as we think about the gifts God has given us, we have to ask ourselves then, what is the fundamental attitude of a Catholic? The fundamental attitude of a Catholic is gratitude. Crotchety Catholics are not good Catholics. <laughs> Although it's good to be crotchety, because that's our human feelings and they're okay. But we can't be negative. We can't be 
forgetful. Our fundamental attitude, in spite of all the difficulties, is one of great, the, the reception of great blessings. And so today, you people and me join at the altar, and if you listen carefully of the, to the Mass, you will hear, in thanksgiving we offer you, Father, over and over, in thanksgiving, for all the blessings that we have. And the final thought is, if God is so liberal with us, guess what kind of heart we should have? A liberal heart. I don't mean vote liberal. I'm not talking politics. I'm talking about fundamentally Catholic hearts are generous. Catholic hearts seek to reach out and strengthen others. They're generous with not just money, but they're generous with forgiveness. They're generous with making peace. They're generous with trying to unify and not divide. They're generous in sharing hope with people. So many people are hopeless. So many people are just going through life as best as they can and don't have any real confident hope. How generous we have to be, just like the God who has been generous with us. And so today, as we think about these readings, let this be our food for the week. See, Catholic spirituality listens to the gospel and takes it home every day during the week. And maybe during the week we can say two things. Lord, make me ever grateful and conscious of gratitude. And Lord, make my heart liberal with others, just as you have been liberal with me. Amen. For our church and parish community, that we may do the work of God in every dimension of our life together, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Sharpenberger, and all who serve and minister to our church, that they may teach justice and holiness born of truth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, clothed in God's likeness, that we may find unity in the bread from heaven that God has given to us to eat, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the homeless, and the hungry, 
that we may share with them the blessings God has rained down upon us, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those for whom life has become a journey through the wilderness, that, we, that they may experience God's abiding care in the loving concern of God's servants, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the peace of Christ, that Christ will welcome them to the banquet of heaven, especially Edward Bailey and Elaine Fort, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. We make all of our prayers in the name of Jesus, who has saved us, who lives now with the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In a similar way, we saw who was in the musical chalice. And one sword made a bag, said in blessed, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. But as is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. 
peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church honor and your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your home. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, to give time and misings to your kingdom. There one day, we hope to enjoy forever with them the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
I am the bread of life, the true bread sent from the Father. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Ancestors ate manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Bread, drink this cup. Trust in me, and you will not thirst. Eat my flesh and drink my blood, and I will raise you up on the last day. Eat this bread. Drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. Anyone who eats this bread, will live forever. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Trust in me and you will not thirst. If you believe and eat this bread, you will have eternal life. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in me and you will not thirst. And from the Father, eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst.
peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. It's good to be with you all. Have a wonderful day. And aren't you glad I didn't speak for two hours? <laughs> Yeah. 